Hi, I'm Mike. And today we're back to a project that turned uh, from two days into, well, a lot more. And we're finishing up a new portion of fence in the corrals with some recycled methane pipe and solving a few problems along the way. It's coming up today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> So a little over a week ago, I started a project that seemed relatively straightforward. The goal was to remove a portion of fence in the corrals that had already been mostly already removed by some pushy cows. And we've been holding together with just a few panels. That section was then to be replaced with a gate and a section of pipe fence. Uh, I decided to split the uh, vent into two days, one day for the gate, the other for the fence. The gate went in pretty smoothly, but it was a few days in between then and now that things got, well, a little bit screwed up. We had our first calf of the season, a stillborn little girl. And while dealing with her and her mom, well, it happened on a Friday when this video was supposed to be done, so we pushed it back. Then we saw the ramping up of the COVID-19 hysteria and pandemic, and we made the choice to actively concentrate on our local community, who were obviously in need of it. We increased our hours at the farm store in order to give customers more options for food. We increased sales. Uh, we actually uh, created sales for uh, beef and pork so that people could buy more and fill their freezers in this time of uncertainty. Aaron took the time to up microgreen production, and uh, that's just a quick turnaround, a locally grown vegetable option. And we stayed busy and optimistic for many that really just kind of needed a, a cornerstone to lean on. But Every single day I drove by or went to the chicken house, I saw this project looking at me. And it's not like I didn't try to get it done. It just took a little bit more time. And here's why. Weather is always something to be dealt with in Wyoming. And with this fence project, we're lucky enough to have just enough room in the shop to start laying out what we need to get done to make it happen. We're using two and three eighths inch methane pipe, recycled from right here on the ranch. This pipe was pulled out of the ground when the methane wells here closed down from the lack of production. And rather than see the pipe go, we kept it here for projects just like this. A few years ago, I cut a bunch of pipe over the winter to build our drive over gate that we use daily on the ranch to head out and check cows in the gator. And today we're gonna use some of the pipe from that project. Each section is cut to about eight feet long and the end is saddled. This is so that one end will fit directly in with another piece of pipe. There are a couple of ways to do this. One is to use a guide like this one. You can trace the saddle around your pipe. This requires that you cut each pipe with a cutting torch to make sure each one's perfect and I don't really don't have that kind of time. The alternative is to use a metal saw set up to cut an angle about 33 degrees, 30 degrees, somewhere in there, cutting each end of the pipe into two opposing angles, creating roughly the same saddle. Now, my way may be faster, but it's gonna leave gaps that are gonna have to be dealt with later. In order to make this process easier, we're gonna build the entire pipe fence, all 24 feet of it, right here on the floor of the shop. This will allow us to make sure that we're straight and square before setting it in the ground. I'll be tacking each piece together with a strong enough weld to hold it together during transport, but not too strong that we can't get it apart if we have to make any adjustments. Once one side is welded up, then we can pull it out of the shop to flip it over and tack weld the other side. If it holds together during flipping, then I can be fairly certain that it'll hold together long enough to put it in the ground and get it set up, then come back and finish welding it in the field. It should be said that this is the first fence pipe that I've built on the ranch, and if it works, then I can see a whole bunch more going in and saving us time and money. Well, look at that, she held. And after heading back into the shop to tack weld the other side of the pipe, it's time to head over to the corrals where this whole fence is really needed. A few warm days have removed most of the frost from the ground. So my first thought was that maybe, just maybe, I can push the new fence 
into the soil. Skipping uh, the, the part where we have to drill post holes and pouring concrete. But the ground is still too hard and the pipe is very unforgiving. And it can scare the crap out of you. Good thing is that now I have markers for where I need my post dug out and the fence can be set out of the way. But it's just then that our tack welds break. And the whole plan of having the fence together in the shop to make it easier to install out here falls flat and is literally shattered. That leads to a little pouting, but the fence needs built, so the bobcat pulls a quick change and becomes a post hole digger and punches a few holes about three feet deep. Then it's a plan to lift what's left of the fence into the holes and set it in place, re-welding the welds that broke. More pouting, a little kicking, and again, another change of plans. Now we're down to one section that's still left intact. That section will go in next to the gate and the rest will have to be rebuilt on site. Each single post is set into concrete and the lone posts are set using cross members to make sure that all of our dimensions stay closely as about the same as they were in the shop. A board across the top keeps our tops level and we're all set once the concrete sets. Plan C, or D, or whichever one we're on now, continues when the weather lets up long enough to head back out and rebuild our section of fence. For this stage, we'll take a small MIG welder out in the field. This welder, on loan from our neighbor Gary, is rated up to one quarter inch thick steel, and hopefully we can use it to get our pipe all back in place before heading back out with our Miller generator welder combo to finish the job. Also coming along for the ride, my new welding helmet and some gloves. Our concrete is now set, has been for a few days now, and we can start getting the pipe back into place using some of the same techniques that we used in the shop. A wooden block to hold our spacing and we can start getting the pipe where it's supposed to be and then welding it in place. We can also use a strap to apply some tension and take up some of the gaps. Our final piece, the solid top rail, is then put in place. and it's then put back in place before being welded where it's needed. A slight curve is compensated for by strapping it down and welding it where it needs to be. With that, our fence is up. It's not entirely done, but we still have to come back with a bigger welder and finish it all up, but for now, it's standing. The gate closes, and even the peacock seems to think it's a job well done. Well, at the very least, he's indifferent, which is sometimes just as good. Time frames are like, well, they're kind of like seasons around here. Um, some come and some go. <laughs> we, we like to be on schedule, but often real life happens and projects just keep on getting pushed back. And eventually though, we do get them done. And if I can find it, it's on here somewhere. There it is. We can cross it off the project list. Man, that does feel good. Speaking of time, we have a brand new project that we're gonna be getting off the ground here tomorrow. And while I can't tell you too much about it, I can say it's probably the biggest project that I've ever tackled here on the channel. It's gonna wear us out. It's gonna wear both of us out. But in the end, we're gonna see more of the ranch than we've ever seen before. And hopefully everybody will get a feeling like we got something done. We're gonna launch it with a special video due out tomorrow where we can explain it all to you. And then during our live stream on Sunday on Beyond the Ranch, we're gonna discuss how you can help. While the world does seem a bit chaotic right now, we are, well, some of us are having trouble finding where we fit. As always, we invite you to come along with us, explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Find a home right here in our community. Till I see you again, be safe, keep your family safe, 
and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.